Tide, the SEC on CBS. Sure are dreaders, yeah. We welcome all of you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. This afternoon, a battle of two unbeatens, Texas A&M and the Alabama Crimson Tide. In the background, the familiar strains of Sweet Home Alabama. Let's take a look at what's at stake in this game. By looking at the SEC West standings, both teams undefeated, ranked one and six. The winner of this game will take a lead in the chase to Atlanta and the SEC Championship. But there is so much more at stake. Hi, once again, everybody, Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson. It's always such a pleasure to come here to Bryant Denny. We were here four years ago. Some similarities. At that time, Alabama was number one. AM is a new member of the SEC making its first visit here, and they knocked off Alabama 29-24. You know, this year, I think, though, the college football world, the connect consensus, and all of the experts thinks it's Alabama here and everybody else down here. Now, we'll see. A&M, as you said, has beat them here in this situation, but believing you can do it and doing it are two different things. Well, how about this, the contrast in quarterback experience? Jalen Hurts, a true freshman starting for Alabama and Trevor Knight a graduate transfer from Oklahoma starts for the Aggies kind of symbolizes where we are in college football right now if you're good enough to play you play and if there's a way where you can play somewhere else you go somewhere else and that's what we got in this football game these two guys are the hub of the offense both their rushing game and obviously the pass game one experience one breaking out right now is maybe one of the most valuable players in this conference the hub the team the defense has to stop well how do they go about it how does a&m for example yeah. upset alabama you know Vern, there's a lot of theories on how to beat alabama mobile quarterbacks uh, get the turnovers i think all those plans are great but a little bit like mike tyson until you get hit in the mouth it's all about physical can you take the physical football game that alabama dishes out and a&m's got those guys that can play physical up front because you have to match alabama at the line of scrimmage first because they've got a whole group of guys that play physical football and i don't care anything else if you can't match them physically you don't have a chance Oh, your mere crowd of 102,000 people gathered here at Bryant Denny. AM and Alabama, so many great figures in college football history associated with these two programs. AM and Alabama. Let's go down to Allie LaForce with Nick Saban. Coach, you said last week after the win it was the most complete game that your team has put together. How do they build off of that success today? Well, I think you make a choice. You either build on it or you get satisfied with it. And what we preached all week is let's build on it. Let's play with consistency. I just hope our guys got the right psychological disposition and they're not too emotional about playing this game. You saw Trevor Knight up close in 2014. He was using his arm then. Now he's beating teams with his legs. What's the biggest threat he poses to your team? Well, I think he can do both. I mean, we have a lot of respect for him, so we have to do a good job up front with him. We're going to have to do a good job in coverage and contain. So this, this is a complete team on offense, and everybody's going to have to do their job. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Right, thank you. Well, uh, there's no shortcut. That's what I think. There's no shortcut in football anymore. You have to tackle well, line up well, and do all the basics first if you have a chance. Now the coin flip has just taken place and while that was happening and Alabama won the toss Allie went across and found Kevin Sumlin coach you came to Alabama four years ago under very similar circumstances an opportunity to beat the undefeated reigning national champions you came up with the upset then how do you do it again today well you know that doesn't really have anything to do with the day so these are two different teams uh, as I said I think we're healthy I like where our, our, our 
our mindset is right now, and we just got to go play. The last time we saw you two weeks ago against Tennessee, the defense gave up almost 700 yards. How did you use the off week to fix that, and how healthy is Miles Garrett? Well, uh, the first thing we needed to do is get healthy, and then we had some things we got to fix. We're a work in progress, but, you know, we played better every week this year as a team, and uh, we just got to be one week better today. How healthy is Miles Garrett today? Oh, uh, he's ready to roll. All right, thanks, Coach. Right, thanks. Miles Garrett, the All-American, missed one game with an ankle injury, and then he was used only sporadically in the game against Tennessee. The Aggies had an open week to get healthy. Well, if you like nice autumn afternoons, boy, do we have one for you here. A cold front moved through on Thursday, took 20 degrees off of the temperature. We're at 72. Alabama leads the series 6-2. to two. The team split the first two meetings, 1942 and 1968, both of those in the Cotton Bowl. Crimson Tide won the toss. They have opted to accept the football. Braden Mann is on to kick for the Aggies. B.J. Emmons and Ardarius Stewart are the deep men. This is Emmons, and he will take a knee. Let's introduce you and the cow to the Chick-fil-A starting lineups, and we'll begin with Jalen Hurts. Well, we saw what he could do last week running the football where he just got outside of Tennessee, and there was nothing that Tennessee could stop him. I think in this game, Lane Kiffin in Alabama is going to try to find some play action passes for him. I think he's going to feed the receivers and the tight ends. Wearing number two. Saw Dar Damian Harris, the sophomore running back, who gets the start in this spot. They will use three, possibly four running backs. Well, Alabama last year, of course, they featured the Heisman Trophy candidate winner, Derrick Henry. That little pass, he took a step forward. And let's uh, introduce you to the remaining members of the Alabama offense. Robinson, his own coach said he's had an inconsistent year. He's an all-conference player, and you saw the rest of the names. Four-man rush. Hello, Damian Harris. Caught from behind, but not until he got to the 39-yard line. Well, where Tennessee two weeks ago had success against A&M was running between the tackles. And Alabama starts off with the same type of strategy. They go quickly, and here is Hurts. He scored on a 45-yard run last week. Looks very much like that one. And it's an Alabama first down. Well, this is the play actually that hurt Tennessee. Fake it inside and get two blockers to the edge. We talked to John Chavis about it, and he said they were outnumbering him. We cannot let that happen. And what happens the first time they run it, they get two guys on one and almost break another play. And shoving match at the end of the play. Now Harris is off, and Joshua. Jacobs has taken his place. First down 10. Opening salvo of the game. Calvin Ridley, left side. Up the middle, Jacobs. Inside the 15 to the 14. Defensively, this Aggie defense is giving up 438 yards. Priest Willis, they might attract attack the corners today. There's Joshua Jacobs for the second time. Well, you can see Lane Kiffin. He's not substituted. He's only substituted once in this game. He's going fastball offense right out of defense and system. They probably brought it to this league. Keeper, no. Deshaun Hall. And let's take a look at the uh, Aggies red zone defense this season. Very good. Yeah, and, and a lot of those numbers were against Arkansas when they had nine plays inside the 10-yard line to, to get two big stops. They held them to a four-play, no points, and one field goal. 
Second down goal. Hale Hentges goes to the far side. Now he comes in and he's a little confused as to exactly where he's supposed to be. So is Ridley. Look at Calvin Ridley looking back saying what is the yeah, call? They're going to take a timeout aren't they? No. No let it go. And the snap. That one flutters. And, and they still didn't know what they were going to do. No. Nope. Neither side. They wanted to save the timeout. They went with the play and now it's third and long. All of the run play so far very similar to Tennessee when they went away from Derek Barnett have all been away from number 15 miles a year. Now I don't spend 100 hours in the office. That, been, that makes sense to me. <laughs> no, but you do study a lot. A lot I know that. I don't even need to study to know that. Miles Garrett, right defensive end. That's Cam Robinson's responsibility. Here's the pair look. Three guys inside, five man rush. They fake it to Stewart. And they wrap Hurts up at the 15. Well, that's the formula that John Chavis and his AM defense wants. You get a negative play on first down. Alabama tries to go fast. They waste the down, and then they get a sack on a quarterback draw, basically. On third down, they force a field goal. It's the bare front. They cover everyone, and there's no place for Hurts to go. That brings on Adam Griffith to try the three-pointer. For the year, you see 8 of 12 with a long of 48. Cooper Bateman is the holder. 32 yards. Got it. Alabama drive stalled inside the 15. But they do get three points. Take another look, Gary, at this Adam Griffith field goal attempt. Yes. It was so close. It is reviewable if. I'll give you the if in a second here. Here's the ball. a and thought it was no good. It's only reviewable if it's below the, goal, the post. It was above. It's not reviewable. I think it was good. Just tucked it inside. So Kevin Sumlin's team is about to get the ball for the first time. Just got the feeling on there that uh, if Lane and Nick Saban had it to do over, they would have taken a timeout at second down. They gave away a down. It was really mass confusion. Hentges yep. and, and Ridley. And didn't even know what they were doing. Not at all. Christian Kirk and Keith Ford are the deep men this time. Adam Griffith will kick it. He does. And it's going to be Christian Kirk taking a knee. Oh, we're going to get the chicken on here quickly, twice. Cow. Chicken. <laughs> well, it's chicken. I mean, Old McDonald had a farm. That's the catch, right? Really. I just that's wasn't that's listening. <laughs> that's the whole yeah. deal. Trevor Knight saved us. <laughs> He's a, uh, yeah. a veteran football player Keep going. that can give this Alabama defense problems. But I think the thing that a &M would love to have is at least, at least eight deep balls in this game. At least throw them. They don't have to complete them. Just throw them. Three wides to the left. They go to the right, and it's dropped by Ricky Seals-Jones. Offensively, well, you've met Mr. Seals Jones. He's missed a couple of games with an in injury. Ricky Seals Jones back in the lineup, and he'll likely want to forget that for him. Second down. Josh Reynolds, top of the screen. This is Kirk in motion. Handoff, nothing. Trayvon Williams, Reuben Foster. Williams met Foster. Defensively, you've met Reuben Foster. How about Ryan Anderson having a terrific season? He is. He, Williams, Allen, three NFL pass rushers on the field. Third and nine. Tim Williams' first play of the game, number 56 to the top. Cut rushing right now. Play action, Knight across the middle. That one is complete to Christian Kirk. I don't 
think there's any doubt that A&M believes if they can protect the quarterback just enough that versus the man-to-man -man coverages for Alabama, they can complete balls. That one good for a first down. Knocked backwards. Dalvin Tomlinson, number 54. We've seen this so much. I remember the Ole Miss tape, watching it from a year ago. They must have batted Chad Kelly's passes down six times. The reason? You're throwing the short passes, and Alabama knows it. They just start going for the lanes. Well, how'd that work out? They tried to sweep, and Ryan Anderson, we just mentioned him, made sure Christian Kirk got nothing. Big loss. Well, it's just hard to get outside. For. They're so fast. I mean, as Nick Saban told Allie, we're a little different team than we've been in the past. We're a little faster. We'll see how it works. Third down 14. Four-man rush. That's all they needed. Jonathan Allen. That's his sixth sack of the year. Well, he came back. Could have been in the NFL if he wanted to. He came back to work on his technique. I'd say his technique is just fine. He's also working on a true freshman offensive lineman, Colton Crater, number 76. That's a tough matchup. We had a chance to talk with him as we get ready for the punt. And he will be in the NFL next year. I said, what are you uh, majoring in? Fair catch called and taken. He said, financial planning. <laughs> good idea. Yeah, very good. Jonathan Allen, one of the defensive leaders on this very good Alabama defense. Now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. You know, no matter what tools you have, there's an art to it. And Lane Kiffin put on an art form of calling plays. Watch how he set up the Tennessee defense with a series of plays early in this game. Outside zone, then he frustrates Derek Barnett in the backside linebacker. Two guys that say, hey, you're running away from me. Then what does he do? He comes right back after those two successful plays, and he runs the reverse. He tees him up, he baits him, and he comes back out. That's art form play calling with good players, but Lane has it there. That's a beautiful sequence of plays. Lane Kiffin, offensive coordinator. First down 10, Calvin Ridley. Almost always will line up to the left side. Stewart will be the outside man to the right. Hurts goes left. Nice. Ridley. And he's after the 36. Priest Willis with the tackle. Emergence of a running quarterback. Surprise. Alabama's using a play. Everybody else is using it now. <laughs> Left guard into the secondary. Wow. I'll tell you, that's a bad omen for AM for two reasons. First of all, they're running between the tackle. Second of all, that's going to bait those t safeties to come up and help on the plays. And what's going to happen is Mr. Kiffin's going to go right over the top of them. You bet. Flip it out near side, Ridley. Looks for downfield help from our Darius Stewart. He gets to the 39 and it's knocked down. If, Go ahead, excuse Gary. Me, Vern, if, if a m has an area of the field that they're concerned about, it's their two corners, Priest Willis and Nick Harvey to the outside. They like to help with their safeties, but when you're getting run on, those safeties go, ooh, where do I help? Damian Harris, the sophomore. 
Now you can preach to the safeties, and they're good ones. Evans, Watts, and Wilson all week that you gotta help, you gotta look for the big play, but nobody likes that ball run down their throats. And all of a sudden, those guys come up to make tackles, and it opens it up behind. And they do switch this time. Ridley is bottom of the screen. Stewart hurts his back, chased, almost caught, and he throws it away. Sean Washington, number 33, giving chase of Jalen Hurts. Well, John Chavis, when people move the ball on him, he starts bringing linebackers. That's exactly what he did with Sean Washington right there. Chiefs been in this league a long time, and he knows and he's not afraid to say, if you're moving the ball on me, I got to bring more people. You got to stop the quarterback one way or another. John Chavis, longtime defensive coordinator, is his alma mater, Tennessee. And here's the rush to the right side. And of course, he was with Les Miles at LSU and now with Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M. Yeah. You know, whoa. Whoa. I've been right there. Donovan Wilson. Dieter. Eric Dieter. Yeah. Transfer from Bowling Green. Third down. Jacobs out of the backfield broke a tackle and picks up the first down with that effort. If you're going to ask me what is the main difference between what separates Alabama's defense, they just don't miss tackles. And when we talk to John Chavis, I go, John, what one thing would you like to have in this game? And he said, no missed tackles. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. First down 10 at the 20. Stacked receivers both Left and right. Now Ridley. They hand it up the middle. There's a tackle secured, but only after they picked up six yards. Joshua Jacobs. He's been a very pleasant surprise. Well, you know what's amazing watching this Alabama team? Remember, this is returning national champs, okay? They have six true freshmen that are making contributions on the offense this year. Six of them that are playing. Now Jacobs hurries off and Damian Harris gets into place. Plenty of time. Second down and four. O.J. Howard is split to the right side. Harris, look at him leave. Look at him pick up a first down. Boy, he is sneaky good, isn't he? Yeah. He, we met with De uh, uh, Harris yesterday, and Lane Kiffin said he's got as good a vision as he's had as any back he's had. Right there, that cut. We saw it before, and that's instincts. You don't teach that. He's a sophomore out of Richmond, Kentucky. Hurts still has it, lobs it. Catch is made. But not much there. And that's not good. Armani Deshaun Watts. Hall just pulled up lame on that play. Number 10. Oh, boy. He played off a block, and he started chasing the quarterback, and something happened. And right here. Takes on the block. Stretches out, and I think he, right there, he wants to hurt his left shoulder. He has had shoulder problems in his career. It's one of the reasons he came in as a 210-pound basketball player, and it wasn't until late in his career he got to 270 because his shoulders, he couldn't lift. Time call. Zucker in New York with his Heisman watch presented by the new Nissan Titan. Lamar Jackson was at it again today for Louisville. 431 total yards, four total touchdowns. He's now set a school record for total touchdowns in a season at Louisville with 34. JT Barrett after the overtime win at Wisconsin going to a whiteout at Penn State tonight. And Jake Browning trying to keep Washington perfect against Oregon State. Back to Tuscaloosa. All right, thank you. On the bench, Deshaun Hall, left shoulder injury. He did walk off without assistance, but he walked off very slowly. It's second down here, 11th play of the drive coming up. 
Well, let's see if they go with the substitute. That would be Quaylen Cunningham. They do. Yes, they do. And there's Jalen Hurts out of bounds with a modest gain to the 10 yard line. Let's go down to Ali LaForce. Vern, good news for Hall. He just put his helmet back on and made his way up to the sideline. You mentioned the left shoulder injury. He was immediately able to move his fingers in the left arm and hand. He came to the sideline, did drills where he could raise his arm in full motion. He should be back in there soon. All right, Ali, thank you. It's third down here. Third and goal. If it's a check with me, it's Lane check with me. It's not the quarterback. He's calling the plays. Two, one, they get rid of it. Hurts, little pressure, and he throws it away. That was Miles Garrett. And we're going to see Adam Griffith again. You know what this reminds me a little bit? Remember at LSU, John Chavis was the architect of that 9-6 win here when Alabama just had the missed field goals and field goals. But even in the, in the BCS championship, until the end, he was holding an Alabama team that was dominating them to five field goals until the end. I mean, it, so this has got the similar start here. Cole Mazza will snap it back. Cooper Bateman will hold. And this is from 29 yards out from Adam Griffith. And it is good. Six zip. With 4.43 to go, first quarter. Doubleheader on CBS, the NFL tomorrow. League game early, Oakland at Jacksonville. New England at Pittsburgh. Without Ben Roethlisberger, it'll all begin with the NFL today. JB and the gang, that's tomorrow at 12 Eastern time, presented by Southwest Airlines. Six nothing here. Alabama has dominated offensively, but they've stalled twice now inside the 20 yard line. Yeah, it's kind of good news, bad news. Obviously, Alabama can move the ball, but 20 plays already early in the game. You know, I don't, A&M does not have the depth to make this into an 85 play offensive burst by Alabama. Well, they made a change uh, in the kickoff receiving core. This time, Speedy Noyle is back, along with Keith Ford. This one returnable by Speedy. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. That's Mac Wilson, a true freshman, by the way. He's going to be an elite player someday. You know who he reminds me of with that hit? Reuben Foster a couple years ago. Holy cow. Well, remember, helmet to helmet would be targeting. Is it? Yes, it is. And that's reviewable by the booth. Let's see if it's stopped and called targeting. Al Ford is the replay official. No stoppage of play. I find that fascinating. Another great defensive play. That's Ryan Anderson. One more look at this hit. Helmet to helmet, crown of the helmet, right to the face. I'm, I just, I thought that's what's target. Yeah. Well, that's two, two of us. Obviously, Al Ford did not. Second down. side Travion Williams and uh, let's go on down to uh, Alan the force Burn Speedy Noyle is still recovering from that hit they asked him if everything was all right and he said my hamstring and they said your hamstring what about your head they're now taking him through concussion protocol on the sidelines I don't uh, we're being told by the Birmingham office that he was not defenseless I thought helmet to helmet was targeting a move that. and it was a good move by Trevor Knight at the end too he has to uh, keep away from the accumulation of hits 
A&M needs to get this to the fourth quarter with a healthy quarterback. Well, I do appreciate the explanation. Yep. Quickly delivered to us. So tough to get wide. So tough to get wide on these linebackers. Ruben that was, Foster. Yeah, been. and also Delvin Tomlinson. Yes. A guy that people do not talk much about, but has been a contributor on the field all year. And we saw him last year. He makes a lot of plays. Loss of five. zone for AM in these passing situations. A punt's not the worst thing because you got an NFL player against a true freshman guard here matched up. Knight, they come at him from the corner. Beautiful throw. Yes. Great timing on that play. Christian Kirk. And again, that's the belief for AM. If they can throw in rhythm, they can complete passes. It's not Trevor Knight's game per se to throw from the pocket, but he showed that he can do it. Alabama fans will swear that he's done it once before, right? Yes, that's when he was at Oklahoma. And he had a huge game for a sooner defeat of this Alabama team. Third and two. I don't think so. Matter of fact, I'm quite certain it's not so. Jonathan Allen again. Yeah, he's got a matchup that he's just going to take advantage of all day. He's got a guard in the center. Look at this. They stunt right into it. Beautiful run stunt. You see how quick he delivered the blow and then moved into the next gap. Perfect call of the defense. So that puts Eddie Jackson deep. He returned to punt for a touchdown last week. Here's Shane Trapuca. Well, this was definitely a punt to keep the return away. Boy. He almost, almost broke loose. Get the CBS Sports app for inside access to Texas A&M, Alabama, or your favorite team from signing day to game day. You'll get instant coverage of every moment from every angle. Download the CBS Sports app today. So the third offensive possession coming up now for the Crimson Tide. Yeah, and Alabama's almost rushed for 90 yards here in the first quarter. This A&M defense cannot let these plays mount up on him. They need a three or four and out really badly here. First down 10. Hurts. Looks deep, goes deep, crossing pattern. Incomplete, 50-50 ball. And a flag is thrown oh, on Priest Willis. Priest Willis and Nick Harvey look at each other and go, if we're not allowed to do this, let's see. Yep, got to him a half step early. It's hairline, but he got to him early. Pass interference. Yep. Gonna call. 24 it's a good call. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Willis, a graduate from UCLA, sat out last year. And Gary said that he expected these corners, Willis and Nick Harvey, to be under attack yeah. much of the day. And it accomplishes another thing. Those deep balls like that keeps the leading tacklers for this AM defense. Think about this. The number one, four, and five leading tacklers are all from the secondary and safeties and corners. They need to keep those safeties back, and those deep balls will help do that. Alabama loads up the left side this time. They'll test the middle. It's Bo Scarborough, the third running back, and Scarborough scored on an 85-yard touchdown run last week. Miles Garrett on the sidelines now. Yeah, we've heard he's healthy, but I still don't believe he's 100%. He might not be 70% like last week, but I don't think he's 100%. Second down. Henches, number 84, comes to the right side. They come up the middle again. It's Scarborough for the second time. 
And uh, for more on Miles Garrett, let's check in with Allie. Kevin Miles Garrett, the last time he came off the field, was extremely winded, so much so that he could barely stand up straight. Looks like it's taking him some time to get back in game shape after being off last week and rehabbing that ankle. Him and Hall were on the sidelines for that last play, but they said it's part of the normal rotation. All right, Allie, thank you. First down, 10. Final 10 seconds. No fumble. First quarter. Yes. Ball's loose. And it was Dylan Mack that caused it. He is quick off the line of scrimmage. When you watch tape, he jumps out, and he's the one that caused this fumble and almost could have been a big turnover. Watch him get off the ball right here. Boom, look at that explosion. Lester Cotton had to tackle him, or he would have almost got the handoff on the play. Our Darius Stewart recovered it. And that becomes the final play of the first quarter. Alabama leads it 6 nothing. We'll return to Tuscaloosa after this message and a word from your local station. Overhead view of Brian Denny Stadium seats 101,000. First stadium. On this site, 1929, 12,000 seats. Hurts. As we uh, enter the second quarter, Vern and Gary with Allie on the sideline. Uh, you think Nick Saban's bothered by the fact that they've had to settle for field goals twice? <laughs> He's bothered by everything. Of it's course really he is. is. <laughs> we Listen, have learned that. There's a, really good news for Alabama. Their offense is working. There's some good news for AM. They've stopped them without touchdowns, and they've thrown a couple passes. That's where we are right now. Yeah, exactly. There's the little shovel pass. O.J. Howard, isn't o. J. it? O.J. Howard. Yeah. Now, this is a generational thing. But every time I see that, it's called the Utah Shovel Pass. Yep. And one of my former partners of 30 years ago, Lee Groska, is sitting in Utah thinking, gosh, I got mentioned, I got popped in the bar. If we had all these type of plays when I played, I could be a 60% pass for two. I'll tell you, this is unbelievable. Up the middle, Damian Harris. Wow. Oh. He came here as an eye formation tailback the offense has slightly changed we asked him yesterday right burn does it make any difference he goes no no a oh, oh, great block by john williams number 73 right there the true freshman tackle for alabama to spring him that's a game of 30 and a first down let's go left side Let's bounce off the tackle and get to the five. Jalen Hurts, Priest Willis with the stop. Well, they're almost impossible to zero in on now. You have no idea which direction they're coming at you with this Alabama offense now. Let me stop there. Damian Harris. I think that was Justin Evans that made that play. Well, to hear the Alabama red zone stats for today, they've had to settle for two field goals, but they're knocking on the door again. If they do throw the fade to the right, it's right into the sun. It'd be better to throw it to the left if they go to Ridley. Damian Harris, there's the pass, and that is what an Alabama touchdown pass looks like O.J. Howard on the receiving end. <laughs> Needs a little help getting up. He's not up yet. Well, O.J. Howard has been doing his job blocking from this H-back position. This time he sneaks out, clears to the outside, and it's a little easy pitch and catch. Dieter could not get off the ball, but actually that helped O.J. find that space, the jam by the A&M defensive back, and a strike. That is the 10th touchdown pass for Jalen Hurts this year, and O.J. Howard still in a sitting position. Well, I don't know if there's anybody in college football that's doing it any better. There are probably some that are doing just as good. 
any better at mixing up their formations and using all their talent. And there's a lot of talent on this Alabama offense. They haven't even got to the defense yet. No. Nine plays, 88 yards. It took all of three minutes and 19 seconds. Adam Griffith for the extra point. And it is 13 nothing. First touchdown scored in the game. Well, everybody handled the ball on this one. Harris takes it up the middle. Great blocking upside. Lester Cotton got another block I did not see the first time. And then the quarterback, Kurtz, runs to the left. And you come back with OJ to the right. That seems like a good strategy to me. <laughs> Adam Zucker, New York, with this AdvoCare update in a game featuring two former Super Bowl coaches, Jim Harbaugh's guys, running away from Lovey Smith's. Khalid Hill makes it 21-0 before the end of the first quarter. Michigan outgaining Illinois 200-8. to As we go back to Tuscaloosa, Vern, Gary, and Alley. All right, Adam, thank you so much. 13-0 here and a game that has been dominated by the Crimson Tide thus far. There's Speedy Noyle who took yeah. that helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Right. He doesn't exactly know where he's going. Justin Evans is the deep man. At the goal line. Same guy. Same guy. Okay. Well, that was number two. Let's go back to Speedy Noyle on number one on the kickoff. Here's the hit. Crown to the helmet. Right to the face. It's a judgment call. There's the rules right there. Whether the crown of the helmet, number one, is used to make contact, it overrides the defenseless player. We've been talking about it, finding the rule. It is a judgment call. The judgment by the replay official and the officials was it was not crown of the helmet. I disagree. New uh, definition of defenseless. Yes. Well, when you're, listen, when you're running the ball against Alabama, you better be ready to get hit. Yeah, that's true. Second down, 10. The problem with AM right now, we talked about some of the good signs. The bad signs are they can't run the ball. They, that's going to be tough. Trevor Knight, I do not think, is a good enough passer just to be a passing quarterback. He needs some help running the ball. Keith Ford is on now. He and Knight, teammates at Oklahoma. Ford transferred two years ago and sat out last year. He's into the secondary. Eddie Jackson makes the tackle. Just remember, when you're watching Alabama stop this A&M running game, they're number one in the country in running. 274 yards a game. Or the SEC, excuse me. Yes. Well, we saw Tennessee attempt to run against this Alabama defense last week. And for their efforts, 32 carries for 32 yards. I don't think you can be anything but balanced against the Alabama defense. If they sniff out that you have a weakness, they will overload you and run you away. You have to stay balanced through the whole game, get it to the fourth quarter. 17 total rushing yards for the Aggies thus far. Blitz threatened. Blitz coming. Pass into Pass. the open. Keith Ford, somebody busted the coverage. Yep. Man, uh, Nick Saban's going to go crazy. You think he was unhappy before? You rush five. When that happens, somebody has to pick up the back. Two safeties back. One of them had to bust on it. You don't have two safeties back when you rush five players like that. That was man coverage. They load up with three receivers to the right side. Give it off up the middle, across the 50. Keith Ford. Well, you know, Vern, we talked about how Lane was so pretty with those play calls, but here's the thing. Tennessee ran the same exact play. 
same exact, the loop outside, the defensive end looks at it, and what do they do? Run it down. That's how fast they are. Sometimes it's not play calling, it's talent. Travion Williams back on the field for AM. Blitz threatened again. They are coming again. Good block by the back. And Knight gets rid of it. Inside the 40, it's Christian Kirk, number three. So, first signs of life. Big play so far was that broken coverage. Yeah, Vern, you called it. It actually was Travion Williams that gets the block to the other side, and then Christian Kirk runs a good stop route, a good route, and gets the completion. It was Ruben Foster defensively, sidearm throw, Christian Kirk. Not this time. Thank you very much. Well, watch Trevor Knight. One of the things that he does not get a lot of credit for is just how athletic he is. Watch him snap this poor snap. Great catch and throws it sidearm to save a play. Wasn't a good play, but it wasn't a bad play. Oh, another bad snap. Sure was. And he overthrows Christian Kirk. Eric McCoy, the center. Well, if you look at Trevor Knight, the first thing that pops out of why he's been successful was he was a great teammate. He won his team over, as we talked about, acrobatic. He made that play, and he's mature. Vern mentioned it in the open. A fifth-year graduate transfer. He's played a lot of football. They've just gone through a few years with immature quarterbacks and young quarterbacks. You yep. can decide which ones are which. Huh. Okay. Third down. Play action into the flat to Kirk. He's being chased down yes. and dropped by Ronnie Harrison. Yeah, and that's a safety type player on AM's best athlete. Watch this one on one tackle. Not a great throw. Half of the tackle had to be given to Trevor Knight with a poor throw that time. It really never allowed Christian Kirk to set up the tackle. Uh, Eddie Jackson back at the 10. Shane Kirk wants it. Oh my gosh. Perfect. Yes, it was. Josh Reynolds down, and they got it down at the one-yard line. Yep. He caught it. He realized that the college rule is it's just the ball, whether he goes in or not. Keep the ball outside. You see two officials say the ball never touched the line. Time call. Injury update on Speedy Noyle. They did test him for the concussion protocol. They took him through all the eye tests. They moved on from that and started working on his right hamstring, which tightened up quite a bit. He did vocally say to the athletic training staff he's dealing with a hamstring injury. They've been stretching him out. He did ride the bike. They're trying to get him back in the game. Okay, Ali, thank you. In the meantime, his uh, teammates on defense are out there, and they have pushed Alabama to the one yard line. Well, this will be a real interesting play calling series for Lane Kiffin. You know he's a very aggressive play caller. He likes to take advantage of defenses and situations, but he's got a defense that's got a total stop. Does he play it safe, or does he try to throw something deep? Here's good news for the Aggies. Deshaun Hall is back on the field. And defensive end. Handoff. Damian Harris it gives him a little breathing room out across the five. Deshaun Hall made the tackle. And Speedy Noyle is heading, trotting along the end line. Looks like he's heading back in the vicinity of the Aggie bench. Right side again. Damian Harris again. Harris now has carried it eight times. He's closing in on 100 yards here early in the second quarter. Eight for 94 for the young man, the sophomore out of Richmond, Kentucky. Spread hurts. That should be enough to move the chain. Harris for the third time. Well, we, we know what the answer is. Lane Kiffin ran it up the middle three straight times. He said, we're running the ball. We're great. We've got 150 yards rushing. Why take a chance? First down 10 at the 12. 
Cam Sims, backup wide receiver, top of the screen. Out there it is, number 15. Miles Garrett's back. That's the, the the mesh rush. This is the defensive style that was used against Auburn. Same thing. You attack the mesh point. This defense has had 58 tackles for a loss coming into this game. The best in the SEC plays like that. And style of defense has made that happen. 8.40 to go in the half. Second down, 12. Throws Ridley. He was uh, two yards beyond the defender. Well, we do have a great matchup. Cam Robinson is the guy that's responsible for him right there, number 74. And watch him this time square up and keep the best pass rusher in college football at bay. Third and 12. Sims and Ridley near side. They got 12 men on the field right now. And yeah, they're going to get called for it. Yes, they did. Station, 12 men in formation on the offense. By their penalty. Whoa. That's called feedback. Well, Damien Harris thought the clock was running down too much, and he waved off the replacement back, Joshua Jacobs. Well, since he got out inside the numbers there and in the hash position, he was in formation, they're gonna call. It's just like being in the huddle with 12 men. Third and 17, four wides, two on either side. Jacobs is on the field. Gets the handoff and gets back. The original five, they just lost to the be fourth down. Well, I'll tell you, as, as bad as it seems, if you're an AM fan, is it feels like it, obviously the score feels like they're getting dominated. One touchdown gives you a whole different look here. Mm -hmm. J.K. Scott on the punt. And Christian Kirk to return. Both excel at their specific responsibilities here. J.K. Scott, the junior from Denver, 47-yard average on 26 punts. Christian Kirk. This one's a boomer. Kirk at the 30. And you're going to get this one called back. And it's, listen, it's easier to do from up here, obviously, but those two guys running that fast are not going to tackle Christian Kirk. It's almost a wasted block, and now it's a 15-yard block, block from behind. You're not going to get, Christian Kirk's going to make those two guys miss easy right in the middle of the screen. During the return, like a block in the back. Number 19 in the receiving team, 10-yard penalty. First down. You know, everybody's Time working out. hard. Everybody's trying to make a play, but that's one where it just would have been better to have a little discretion. Jeremy Tabuyo, number 19, AM, with the penalty. Brian Denny Stadium, current capacity a little over 101,000. And the Duck appreciates that and asked the trivia question for Aflac. Name the two teams with road wins at number one ranked Alabama. To cast your vote, you saw it on the bottom of the screen. I'm not a speed reader. 13 nothing is the score, 719 to go. Trevor Knight and the Aggies have the ball. Keith Ford is the running back. Alabama is playing six defensive backs in the game. Ronnie Harrison is in the linebacker spot right there as the sixth defensive back. The go left. Keith Ford with the carry. 
Well, we all know how good they are. I mean, even though they had a bunch of guys go to the NFL, they got a bunch of guys that have come back. They're hungry. They got great technique. Oh, look at that layout. That's a beautiful play. But up and down the line, they got guys that run and they got veterans. Hey, Jonathan Allen would have gotten diving points. Yes, he one. sure would have. Second down. Knight back. Pressure coming. He goes deep left side and is incomplete. No, Mazzoni, excuse me, Vern. No, Mazzoni told me on the field that he wanted at least eight deep balls in this game. He said our chances of going 80 yards on them, play it is just too hard, just too hard to do. Well, that was Speedy Noel. Zoni, defensive coordinator, offensive, I beg your pardon, at UCLA last year. Last couple of years. Third and eight. Night. Nothing. Fourth down. Christian Miller with the tackle this time, number 47. Uh, he'll be next year's star. Coming from the outside, though, number 56, Tim Williams is what flashed Trevor Knight inside the pocket and caused the stop for the try for a first down. Uh, another great defense. And how is Alabama Look, they had the ball, remember, last time at their own one-yard line. Yeah. They flipped the field, and now it's a dangerous position for AM. Eddie Jackson has two returns for touchdowns this year. He's going to let this one bounce. And it does so. That's a very short punt for Trapuca. Jalen Hurts, freshman, Channel View, Texas. We'll be on the field when we come back. Adam Zucker in New York coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Rick BJ and I will get you caught up on today's action, including in the SEC. Will Muschamp gave the keys to true freshman Jake Bentley. First game, over 200 yards, two touchdowns, and a win over UMass as we go back to Tuscaloosa. All right, Adam, thank you. Damian Harris just three yards short of 100 now in the first half of play. And uh, this run of uh, over 20 yards, the AM defense has allowed on the season only five plus 20 yard runs all season. And Damian Harris already has a 30 yard run in this game. By the way, they've only given up two touchdowns more than 20 yards. He's got a feeling. This play action, yeah, the yeah. deep post game is going to happen pretty soon here. Hey, put out, Robert Foster on the field now, backup receiver. He's at the top of the screen. The two deep safeties, AM, will not concede. They're going to continue to make Alabama run the ball, it looks like. That's Harris who adjusts his position. Didn't look so effective. Miles Garrett was right there. Well, I'll tell you, Alabama over 200 yards. AM, what do they have? 50 in this game? It's 70. Okay. Yep. Still just hanging in the game. Can they get out of this half? Remember, Alabama took the ball to start the game. It would be an AM's ball in the second half. Hurts throwing the ball. Now 7 of 11. Looking deep, going deep. Calvin Ridley's down there, and he overthrows him again. And it was good, good coverage by Priest Willis that time. It would have taken a perfect pass. Couldn't be short. Man-to-man -man coverage. Listen, John Chavis built his reputation on man-to-man -man coverage and grabbing the jersey. <laughs> the combination of those two things are really effective. He taught him well. <laughs> 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 It's really, really hard to complete passes when that happens. <laughs> Third and ten. Let's see, three-man rush here. Miller Forrestall, the backup tight end, O.J. Howard. He runs a crossing pattern. Yes. It's intercepted. Picked off by Claude George. Yep. Nice little stunt that time from the Chief. He lined up with three, but he brought the outside, inside linebacker on a cross. Jalen Hurts felt the pressure. 
had a player down. Watch the pressure come around, and then this spying guy is right there. Number 10, Deshaun Hall, is the guy who got the hit, and then number 31 is the recipient. It was Deshaun Hall, was it? Deshaun Hall, rather, number 10, that got the hit on the stunt inside, and he let it go, and a turnover. And Donovan Wilson crushed Harris on the play. 517 to go. Aggies have the football. John McQuaid is the referee, and he is chatting with the replay official Al Ford. Was this targeting? On the interception return. Well, Back. this is more of a defenseless player right now. The ball carrier is not considered defenseless, but I think the helmet to helmet here, whether he got him with the crown or not, but this will make the AM fans furious, no matter what, how this goes. Damian After Harris. video review, during the interception, there's targeting our number six of the intercepting team. 15 yard penalty. Number six is disqualified for the remainder of the game. So maybe the biggest playmaker on this AM defense is going to leave the game in the second quarter. I, I, I really think both of them were targeting. I mean, I can't argue with that, that being targeting. That's targeting. He didn't have to hit him in the head, he could have gone lower. Sure. That's what we're trying to get out of the, of the game. But it, that's a tough blow for the AM defense. He's such a valuable player. And again, AM loses field position for a two and a great player. Well, that's the second potential targeting we had called. The other was on a kickoff, speeding Noyle. And he was deemed not defenseless. Thus, no well, targeting. It, it was call. deemed not crown of the helmet. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Yes. Watch out. Intercepted. Marlon Humphrey. One of the few times Alabama is sitting in a zone and it's misread by Trevor Knight. Watch Humphrey, and all he's doing on this is watching the quarterback. It's a zone defense. He sits, he sits, he sees it, he sees the tip. Great athlete makes up the ground. Pass was intended for Josh Reynolds. And that is an interception for Marlon Humphrey. His second of the season. A lot went wrong for AM and and those playing a half or whatever it was, wasn't it? A lot went wrong. Ties the longest streak now. Haven't even mentioned yet that the Aggies, or rather the uh, Crimson Tide, going after their 20th consecutive win. So your true freshman quarterback just threw a pick. Right. You want to get him back in the game, maybe they're running the ball a little bit. Busted play. Yes, it was. Real mix up in the backfield. Bo Scarborough. So no gain on the play. He did get back to the line of scrimmage. By the way, Jalen's father was his high school football coach for the Channel View Falcons. They had a rough night last night, lost to North Shore in the Houston area, 68 to nothing. But Dad is coming to the game, especially here in the second half. In the meantime, our Darius Stewart. This gimmick formation. This guy's not eligible, so he has to go backwards. He can't go downfield. It confuses AM. The slot receiver was actually covered on the play, but he never went downfield. Lane Kiffin tried to snap it early and got a penalty. illegal First procedure. 
Very clever formation by Lane Kiffin that time. Put three receivers out there, but one of them was ineligible. Throw the 50-50 ball, and our Darius Stewart goes up and gets it against the sub that came in for Donovan. Right. After the penalty, first down, 15. Hurts into the flat. O.J. Howard, fifth catch of the first half for Howard. Gary Dieter with a good block to get him additional yardage. Well, this is a run play for nine or ten of the guys. Watch the offensive line. They're thinking run. The quarterback decides whether he throws it to the outside or not. One of the clever RPOs that all of college football is using now. Very difficult to defend. 21 yards on that one. Good defensive effort here. Joshua Jacobs, the ball carrier. And Kingsley Kiki and Armani Watts defensively. Well, we figured that the tight ends would get a little more active in the game. You know, when you run for a lot and you ask your tight ends and receivers to block for the running game, the next game you got to give them some sugar. You got to get them back in the ball game. I mean, if you want them to block, you got to give them some balls. Now we got Dieter wide to the right side, Ridley wide left. Blitz threatened now by the Aggies. Right side, Joshua Jacobs. He only had two from Division I schools, so received one from Alabama, and he has really blossomed with this program. Two freshmen from Tulsa, Oklahoma. too far outside. Good job by Nick Harvey that time. Good coverage, and it would have taken a perfect pass. That brings on Adam Griffith again, busy for the day. He's made two. That was actually, again, another must stop for A&M to stay in the game. I just couldn't see them coming back if they, you know, gave up seven. They stay in the game. Doesn't look pretty, but they stay in the game. 29 yards officially. Griffith. Oh, missed wow. It. He barely made the first from 32 yards out. Yeah, he made, missed almost missed the one to the left. So he readjusts and he misses this one to the right. Ooh, that was close, and again, it looks good, and it is reviewable if it was below the top of those posts. Not reviewable now. So the Aggies get the stop and the ball back with 2.20 to go. I, I think Kevin Sumlin would take getting to halftime right now. He's got the ball. I think if he could yell across the field to Dick Saban and say, you want to call it right here, I think he'd do it. <laughs> Keith Ford. If they could put points up at the end of this half, remember they get the ball back to start the second half. Yep. Hard to drive long against this Alabama defense, though. They do have all three timeouts left. Left side. Keith Ford again. Big first down. Big first down right there. Now that makes Nick Saban not use his timeouts. He's looking at field position and go, I'm going to play this conservatively. I'm not going to take a timeout and let them kick a late field goal on me. 13-0. Play action. Knight goes deep left side. In or out. 
It is. That's a big guy, though, isn't it? Complete Ricky Seals Jones. He dropped the first pass of the game. Does he get this one? Oh, I don't know. They called him in, but that's got to be reviewed. Well, you can oh, oh, brother. This play is a reception at the sideline. This play is now under video review. Obviously, they just uh, replayed that on the big screen television here, all four of them. Let's see if we can take a better look at this. I, I, I don't know if you can overturn See, those. that's what, you know. The, the turf is inside the line. I don't see any of the line being distorted. Do you see any of the white being distorted? I don't know if you can. I think they're just going to let the play stand. That would be my opinion. It could be on the line. It might not be on the line. I think they're going to call that a catch. I mean, it, it is white cleats and two yeah. white lines. If he had black shoes on in the old days, it'd be a lot easier right now. <laughs> there you are. But is that definitive? I, I, I can't tell. It looks like it. Maybe, maybe there's, not. There's division in the broadcast, yes. by the way. You guys, you think it's on the line? No, I don't, but Butch oh, Baird, oh, the okay. spotter, does. Chuck Gardner has not weighed in on it yet, nor is David Moulton. Let's put it this way. I was more sure of the targeting than I am <laughs> on this one, and I missed that one. So <laughs> I'm still not so sure you missed it. <laughs> if I was the replay official, I, I cannot tell. The guy, the official standing right there. It doesn't help anything right there, one layer. No. The fans are well-schooled and patient, aren't they, here at the stadium? They know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. It'd be a big completion for this A&M team, put a lot of pressure now e After the video review, the ruling on the field of a catch stands, first down. Stands. That means he did not. He did not have anything that he could conclusively say. He just went with the call on the field. And I think that's the correct call on it. Tutor, I beat both of these guys on the booth here. I'm really happy. Yeah. And you got me tagging along. <laughs> right? Perfect. We'll talk about that on the bus later. I can it too. <laughs> First down, ten on the 25-yard catch. Ford goes left. He's been the primary ball carrier here in the latter part of the first half. Keith Ford with his sixth carry. Reuben Foster with the tackle. Every time Trevor Knights thinks that he might do a running play, he sees an Alabama player assigned to him. They know how dangerous he is. 138 to go in the half. Adjustment defensively. Eddie Jackson comes up. Here's Knight. Quick behind the receiver, and he was open. It's Travion Williams. Yeah, and that was Ryan Anderson in coverage. Ryan Anderson is a defensive end who peels with the running back. But, you know, he was recruited, I think. Where is he? Right here on this play? Yes, in the middle. He was recruited to Alabama as a middle linebacker. But he plays all over the field. He's not the tallest player, but he's really effective coming around the corner. Third and five, three receivers right, covered by three defenders playing up close. Keep it on the ground. Great tackle. Wow. Now, what do you do if you're AM? What, what do you do? You got fourth down here. 13th, too far for a field goal. I think you just got to, if you give him the ball, though, if I was Kevin, I'd go all the way down and make my decision, though. I'd be in no hurry. I'd even take a timeout with one second to go. And they've got three full complement of timeouts. It's fourth and two. You don't need the time if you make the first down if you're a &M. You could go all the way down to the end and decide what to do. He ran it out very nicely here. Trevor Knight. Great run by Trevor Knight. Well, we just saluted this Alabama team for always covering the quarterback. And on this play, 
a bust. There's always a player assigned to the quarterback when he can run like Trevor Knight. A 27-yard gain for the Aggies. First down and goal, 45 seconds remaining. Keith Ford alongside in the backfield. Knight into the corner. Touchdown, Josh Reynolds. That's those 50-50 balls, and if there's a safety net that Trevor Knight feels comfortable going to, it's his veteran receiver, Josh Reynolds. All he does is catch touchdowns and first downs. He's had 25 receptions coming into the season. 19 of them have been either a first down or a touchdown. That's number 20. How about that drive? First catch today for Josh Reynolds. Daniel LeCamero will attempt the extra point. It's good. Trevor Knight, when he was an Oklahoma quarterback, defeated this Alabama football team in the Sugar Bowl. Huge first half play for the Aggies. The young man from San Antonio. Touchdown pass, Josh Reynolds. 13 7, 38 seconds to go in the half. That was an eight play, 80 yard drive. Took 142. And of course, the key play was the fourth down to 27 yard run by Trevor Knight. Well, and, and I'm saying Kevin Summers would like to just get out of the half with right. 13 nothing. They go all the way down to score. I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> There's a pooch kick. That was def defensive tackle right there. Dakota Ball that caught that play. Did play some tight end. He's very comfortable with the ball. 31 seconds to go, and that's just enough time to reintroduce the duck with the Aclock trivia. Oh, so simultaneous yell there. Name the two teams with road wins at top-ranked Alabama. USC 1978 in Birmingham, and the Aggies here. 29-24, Kevin Sumlin, the coach, Johnny Manziel, had a terrific day. 13-7. Yep. Sam Bam Cunningham, remember that? <laughs> Joshua Jacobs. Well, it's assignment football when you're playing running quarterbacks. It's either Ryan Anderson or Eddie Jackson. One of the two guys has to have the quarterback. Ryan Anderson chases. Eddie Jackson chases. They both go for the run. You can't have it. Somebody's got to have the quarterback. We are literally moments away from going back to New York. And the Geico halftime report with Adam Rick and Bryant. First five drives, 25 yards or 20, uh, 70 yards and 25 plays. Last drive, 80 and eight. Well, does Alabama throw a deep ball? I think not. Huh? Well, I was dead wrong. It's moderately deep. It's complete to Darius Stewart. That's why you do what you do, and I don't. Well, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. No, to tell I know the truth. <laughs> Quick snap. Right side. Got it. That's O.J. Howard, and that is O.J. Howard's sixth catch of the first half. And they're good from 56 up. Yeah, they're not so good from 57. <laughs> we, we learned that. <laughs> You know, you set me up on that. <laughs> Almost every Alabama game we do. <laughs> oh, gosh. Gary's references to the Iron Bowl, of course, in 2013 when Nick Saban brought Adam Griffith on to try 57. Yeah. O.J. Howard. They're in Five seconds. Goal range. Okay. I mean, they're in range. 
but they have timeouts. They could run a quick sneak or something and try to gain a few yards. They've got two timeouts. They're going to take left. a timeout and discuss it. They still have another timeout left. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to go field goal. You see what he saw. He waved in the field goal team. Do it now. Well, yep. Time has been called, so we're going to see Adam Griffin again. Well, we're back at Brian Denny. Adam Griffith about to attempt. We think it's going to be a 52 or three yarder. Here was what set this up. It's a pooch kick, and Dakota Ball got there. Right. He played a little bit of H back at tight end, so he's comfortable with the ball, even though he's a defensive tackle now. He was comfortable in that field position, allowed Alabama to throw those short passes and give a try for a field goal. Well, he saw the long for the year for Griffith. 55. In warm-ups, he was easily hitting this. This from the right hash, 53 yards. Oh, here we go. A&M's going to do the Time out of the strategy Texas now. Texas A&M. It will be a 30-second timeout. Well, we've told you many times Adam Griffith's story, born in Poland to put up for adoption. By the way, just it gives me a chance to give a shout out. Gene Wojciechowski, a writer and a television reporter. I happened to see him before the game. He went with Adam Griffith last year and did a, an outstanding story about his homecoming to him and meeting with his adoptive parents. And uh, you're all ESPN all day today now, aren't hey. you? Made the, you made the, <laughs> You're not going to leave us and go over there, are now, you? Now, quit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lee Corso is 81 years old. Okay. You, know. <laughs> you got to put those hats on, though. No, that's a good point. <laughs> I don't look good. <laughs> In any case, now they made it a 52 yard. We call time again. And. No. Oh, illegal procedure, was it? Ball start. Ball yes. start. Yes. Offense, five yard penalty. Well, that's going to get him right into the familiar yeah, position. Yeah, now it's a 57 yarder. 57 yarder. Oh, you got to try it, don't you, if you're Alabama? Come on. Sure. Just to prove your point, you got to try it. Or do you go Hail Mary? Interesting. Remember, this would not account. The whistle was blown before the yeah. kick. So even if he made it. So <laughs> here we go. This is too perfect. And a half. Too perfect. Nobody back, by the way, for AM. 57 yards officially. Uh, Look at this. They're going to fake it. Cooper Bateman is the Time backup out quarterback. Timeout by Kevin Sumlin. Timeout by charge, Kevin Sumlin. Timeout by Kevin Sumlin. Texas A&M. It will be a 30-second timeout. Cooper Bateman is the quarterback, as Vern told you. It's one of the uh, idiosyncrasies of uh, Nick Saban. He's always used a quarterback. He likes a guy who's comfortable with the ball to do things just like this as his holder. So many teams now go with the punter as doing it. He's mm -hmm. always used his backup or starting quarterback. Thursday on CBS, the Big Bang Theory moves to its new night, leading a parade of premieres, starting with the new comedy, The Great Indoors, followed by Mom and Life in Pieces. It's comedy's big night, Thursday, only CBS. Yes, tell them what's going to happen now, bro. Gonna go Hail Mary, aren't they? Yeah, uh, they are. Yep. Yeah. Now, Calvin Ridley's to the bottom of the screen by himself, and the bunch formation is to the right. His hurts back, lets it go deep right side up in the air. Intercepted. Justin Evans, yes, I think. Did. Yes, he did. He got it. No matter how many times you tell these DBs to knock it down, they just love their interceptions. And he goes up and grabs it. A lot happened in those last two and a half minutes of the half. Sure did. But we have reached halftime. 13 to 7. Now it's time for Inside Access presented by AT&T, official sponsor 
of the SEC. Here's Allie with Kevin Sumlin. Coach, just when it looked like nothing was going your way, your defense comes up huge with the stop in the red zone. Trevor Knight brings the team down to score. What did those last two minutes mean to this football team? Well, it's the way we've been all year. I mean, these guys aren't going to give up. And, and uh, we're going to keep playing. We may have found something offensively there at the end. Uh, we start with the ball. We, you know, we, we need to get it rolling in, in the second half. I think uh, offensively, you know, they, they're, they're good defense. You know, we, we got to pick our spots and take some shots here in the second half and uh, you know, get some points on the board. How will the Wilson and Jackson affect this defense? Well, I don't know. You know, we, we haven't given up a point since he's been out. I mean, he's a very fiery guy. You know, I, I just I, I feel for him in that situation. He's playing hard. Um, but, you know, the, the decision was made. Thank you, Coach. Right. Yeah, I, what they found is they got to do a few more 50-50 balls. They worked on the one to Ricky Seals-Jones and to Josh Reynolds. Yeah, the Reynolds was for the touchdown. And that is the end of the first half. 13-7 Alabama. Now let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studio. And we have ourselves a game. Thank you, Vern. Coming up here on the Geico Halftime Report, Rick, BJ, and I will show you how Heisman hopeful Lamar Jackson's record-setting day in Louisville went after this word from your local station. 13-7 as we get set for the third quarter moments ago. Our Allie in the Force had a chance to chat with Alabama's Nick Saban. Coach, your defense held a and to just a score, yet it's still a one-possession game. How do you separate yourself in the second half? Well, we got to take advantage of red zone opportunities and score in the red zone. I mean, we kicked two field goals and missed one, had an opportunity at the end to get another one, and, and jumped offside. So, you know, we just got to execute. We got to do our job. You know, we've given them some stuff on defense by making mental errors. We got to tighten that up. I just play better. I mean, no scoreboard. Let's just go play. Thanks, Coach. Right. Burn, just go play. Yeah, I mean, uh, you get inside the red zone if you're Alabama four times and no touchdowns, you know, on I mean, four opportunities like that, and you only get, you know, 13 points, 300 yards and 13 points. And here is the kick from Adam Griffith. This one will be taken by Keith Ford. And he drops to a knee. It'll come out after the touchback. Well, it was a kind of strange last yeah. couple of minutes in the first yeah. half. It was. I mean, that last drive, uh, you know, I think the one busted assignment on that Trevor Knight run, but the plays, a and made the plays. I mean, everybody's talking about, you know, Alabama's great, and they are good. I mean, they're good. But you just got to keep playing, and I think that that's what A&M goes into halftime now saying, it's a football game, and it's going to be a dogfight. At least that's what they believe. From the 25, Right side, Keith Ford. That's Ford's eighth carry. Travion Williams, who came in as the leading rusher for the season for AM, has carried it five times for five yards. Second and six. Yes, it sure was. It's Keith Ford, though. He's running loose. And he's more than picked up a first down for Texas A&M. Eric McCoy having trouble snapping that ball back. Yeah, it, it, that's not unusual. If you watch the tape of A&M, it's been a struggle. Not every play, but it's been a consistent struggle, the shotgun snap. Gain of 14. Three wide to the right. Knight comes to the left. Great coverage. Josh Reynolds. And Gary, take us through the first half trends. Well, we started talking about quarterbacks uh, as the key to the hub of the offense. And it basically, AM has slowed down the running game for Jalen Hurts. Alabama, just one really positive running play for Trevor Knight. But there's the story. You know, four positions, just the one touchdown pass to O.J. Howard. And uh, a &M gets down there Eligible once and makes a count. Field. Number 64 offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Oh, the problems persist for Eric McCoy. He was the ineligible player downfield. Yeah, you're allowed to go three. Go 
further. First down, 15. 13 7 in the third. That's Trey Young Williams, and we've got a whistle again. Back up again. Ball start. Number 19 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Jeremy Tabuyo, the backup wide receiver. So you make a first down, you feel good about halftime, you come out, two mistakes. First down, 20. One thing AM has done well so far in this game, they haven't allowed Alabama's defense or special teams to put any points on the board. Knight gets around the corner. That was Jonathan Allen who claims he was held. Yeah, well, well. <laughs> yeah. I might have an argument there. Knots. The acronym for non-offensive touchdowns. Look at this. Alabama through seven games already with 11. Four fumble returns for touchdowns, four interceptions. Here's Knight. He goes to the right side. And he's got another running first down. No, oh, no I'm it, sorry. It, I just saw the chain go down. He, he, he would have up. if there yeah. weren't for two penalties there. <laughs> Thank you. But a positive play. Now here's been the problem. Third and long against this Alabama defense. They've been not been able to slow him down. Free play. So he goes deep. Double coverage. It's caught. Jeremy Tabuyo. Well, he made up for the offsides, didn't he? This time, Alabama jumps. Trevor Knight knows he's got a free play. And he says, I'm going to throw it downfield. I don't care if he's covered or not. And he throws a strike. Another chunk play for the AM offense. A gain of 33. So they overcome first down and 20. Corner blitz. Knight off his back heel into the end zone. Caught touchdown, Christian Kirk. And the Aggies are within an extra point of taking the lead. Okay, this is bad vibes for Alabama. Those same fade passes that Trevor Knight did for Oklahoma. He did this against them, throwing it right down the chimney. Good coverage, but you cannot stop a perfect pass. You shield him, and Christian Kirk does a great job matching up against the safety and making it count as a touchdown. Daniel LaCamera with the extra point that would give the Aggies the lead. Well, it's, about this. Yeah, well, it's third and long. You figure Alabama's going to force a tough pass. They get it. And then you get the wheel route. And a perfect throw. What a nice play. He knew where the ball was going. He had Kirk on Ronnie Harrison, a safety, and he threw it right down the chimney. Tomorrow, it's a special edition of Thursday Night Football. This is really special. Live from London on Sunday, as the New York Giants rub it out with the L.A. Rams on the NFL Network. 14-13. Gary, take another look at the yeah, end of the game. Yeah, a lot of talk uh, in the truck and the booth about the end of that play. Obviously, it was reviewed. Ronnie Harrison stays with it, controlled. With the ball moving, I think he had it, and the ball was controlled, and it was a good call touchdown. Christian Kirk has caught seven of the 11 completions by Trevor Knight. Braden Mann will 
will kick off for the Aggies. Our Darius Stewart will bring it out. Today provided by Goodyear for 60 years. Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest rivalries. All year, Vern, uh, whenever I've been talking about Alabama, there's no arguing how good a football team they are. But we've also talked about it's not easy to win a championship. And there's going to be that game. You know, they had one at Ole Miss and they answered it. And, but it kind of moved away. Could this be one of those fourth quarter games that the pressure will really ratchet up? Can AM get it to the fourth quarter and stay in it or in the lead? Here's a snap back to Hertz. And he is taken down by Zay Coben. Henderson, number 92. John Chavis went back to his bear look. Three men inside, the bookends outside. D.D. Hall, Miles Garrett, you flush the quarterback out and you clean him up. There's John. He always says, I don't care about yards, it's points. It's a test of his theory. <laughs> they put a lot of yards up. Hurts out of the backfield, O.J. Howard. Back to the 30, almost the 30-yard line. Armani Watts, number 23. Well, A&M answered the bell for a third down conversion. What will Alabama do? Third at the 29, and they need four. Substitution for Alabama. That'll allow at least the option for A&M to sub. They do not choose to. Miller Forrestall, the backup tight end, is the man who came on. Hurts. Got the first down. That's the big hitter that he dodged, too, Justin Evans. He goes for knockout blows. He tries to hurt people when he tackled the leading tackler, and Jalen Hurts makes a miss. He went just with his shoulder. He didn't try to wrap up at all, and that's the one thing John Chavis told us. He said, we don't teach tackling like that. You have to wrap up, and he did not try to do that. Sean Washington finally got the tackle, but Hurts picks up the first down. Hurts with nine carries for 28 yards in the game. Left side, incomplete. Intended for Calvin Ridley. Well, the way Alabama ran the ball early in this game, one wonders why they're not, you know, running Damian Harris, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they're having, they got a young quarterback. They have you know, two great pass rushing ends, and they had success running the ball early in the game. Lane has chosen to stay it more wide open. Second and ten. Side arms it. Miller Forrestall was the intended target. Third and ten. back in the game over the center and he is quick off the ball right over the center. Hurts rolls out. Oh, he's going to get roughing the pass or automatic first down. Sean Washington. It looked like he just shoved him but he got him to the face. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Contact to the face now. Yep. Number 33 defense. It's in your penalty. And automatic first down. A&M would get the ball here. Yep. Sean Washington just tries to shove Jalen Hurts. Gets off the block, and it hits him right in the face. <laughs> Is your, if you're a head coach, you just got to be shaking your head. You just got to be going, guys. Composure. It's, it's hard enough to beat these guys when you do it. Now, listen, everybody's trying to play as hard as they can, but A&M had to stop there. And instead, Alabama's got a first down and 10 at the 50. 
Trading by one. Left side. I, I, I gotta believe that it, Alabama's gonna test to see if they can start running the ball again. That's uh, the 11th carry for Damian Harris. And he has now reached 100 yards in the ball. Game. Only one time have they been successful in getting Jalen Hurts on a design run outside. And that was early in the game as well. Second down five, 14 13 Aggies. Three wides. This is a design run all the way for Hurts. And it doesn't get very far. Fumble. Aggies think so. They called it down. Looked like Claude George recovered it after Sean Washington forced it. Let's see. Knee down, yep. ball out. Yep. Good call. And it's third and three. Roll out again for Hertz. Got a man open. It's Ridley. He's got a first down. Inside the 40. Well, that's what uh, Jalen Hurts, if he could just keep his composure like we always talk about it. Ridley goes one way and then just slides out. A pick by our Darius Stewart. Turns around, does it nicely. Does it with his rear end. He doesn't block anybody. Get a little scrape to the outside. First down 10, pressure from Deshaun Hall. Hurts. Look at him. A lot of space now. Yes. They got Garrett on the block. And Jalen Hurts gets inside the 35-yard line, Priest Willis. And what will happen on this play is Miles Garrett had to cover so much territory running one direction and then going back the other as he's out of gas. They're going to lose both Miles Garrett and Sean Hall on the play. They're going to have to take them both out for a rest. They still a step behind the line. It's Damian Harris, first down, Alabama. And what happens again, as good as those two guys are rushing the passer, they're just as effective for the defense of stopping the run. That's how important they are. We saw that against Tennessee with a 75% Miles Garrett. Here's Harris again, near the 20. Otaro Awaka, number 42 makes the tackle and there's an injured player for Texas A&M I believe Alex Caesar Jr. The replacement for Donovan Wilson medical staff is out we'll step aside See on CBS is sponsored by John Hancock. Sonic. Napa. And by Nissan. Oh, statue of Coach Bryant, Alex Caesar, is uh, being helped off the field, but he's uh, up and walking. Let's take another look at the injury. Yeah, he kind of got his uh, neck kind of bent to the side. Watch right side of your screen. Watch how it gets bent to the, his right. And without Donovan Wilson in the game, and now his backup, who does AM come with? Do they stay with another DB, or do they bring in a linebacker, Richard uh, Moore? No, they're looks like Noel with, Ellis. Yes, it is. Noel Ellis, number four, number right? Number four, yes. And he's over here and on the near that, side. that injury allowed both 10 and 15, Hall and Garrett, back in the game. Second down, five. Blitz. Jalen Hurts to the five. Knocked out of bounds with a first and goal for Alabama. Boy, this is well blocked. I tell you, 
You got a big outside rush inside. You've got the guard in the center pinning the tackle. Cam Robinson barely had to block Miles Garrett on the play. That was a perfect quarterback run call there. First down goal. 19 yard run for Hertz. O.J. Howard to the left side. Hertz with a stiff arm. He lost yardage. Miles Garrett was the first man there, number 15. Now, last time he was playing pass. This time, let's see what he does. He's got O.J. Howard, I think, in the matchup. He runs right through O.J. Howard and then through Damian Harris to force it wide. And then the safety, Armani Watts, comes up to finish the playoff. Give half the tackle to number 15. Look at this. Fifth time they've been inside the red zone. They've got one touchdown and two field goals. Lob it out. Got it. Ridley, Alabama touchdown. And there is a flag that has just been thrown on the near side. It, it might go to our Darius Stewart. The result of the play. play is a touchdown. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 13 in the yes. offense. It was Artarius Stewart outside the field of play that kept blocking, and I don't know what else happened. He got kind of got lost in the crowd, but it's going to be post-touchdown. This actually was Jalen Hurts, one of his nice touch passes of the day. If you hit Ridley in stride, he has a chance to get there. If you throw it behind him, he has no chance. Gets him in stride. Ardarius Stewart keeps fighting, but then a little bit of entanglement at the end that we didn't see right there. Well, Nick Harvey was involved defensively. And remember, this drive would have been stopped without the quarterback uh, kick hands to the face. Extra kick is good. 2014 with six. 33 to go third quarter. Important that is, yes, points are huge. Remember, this drive was 14 plays. It would have been stopped at six. Eight extra plays means now this AM defense is out there. Already 63 plays by Alabama in the game. They're going to approach 80, 85 plays. Playing hard, gets rid of a block, and then hands to the face. And at the end of the drive, a perfect touch pass, as Gary said. Touchdown, Ridley. Twenty fourteen, Alabama back on top. And a reminder that the Napa play of the game will be brought to you when we have uh, put this one to bed. Several choices thus far. And after the penalty, the ball back at the corner. Keith Ford at the 23. And he motors out to the 37. Well, Gary, take us through well, what we discovered. The sorry, celebration. sorry, Darius Stewart. We did find this play. We're going to show you this exactly what happened here. The end of the play. Good effort. Good effort. Linesman's right there. Watch this. Taunting. He's got his eyes right on him. He's watching it. He's clapping right in his face. He's going to call it. So the Aggies get it back, trailing by six. There's Stewart. First down, 10. Travion Williams is the running back. Ninth design run. Boy, he's dangerous. <laughs> it was like Reuben Foster came off the bench as a 12th man. He gets into the secondary with a really good quarterback draw. And then he turns up, and here comes, oh, no, it was not. It was uh, Ryan Anderson coming off the bench. It was like, where'd he come from? <laughs> First down, 10, 16-yard run. Nearing the six-minute mark of the third quarter. Corner blitz. They hand it off and don't get much. 
I've always believed what you have to do, we're just gonna show you SEC wins against Alabama. Something sticks out. Efficiency at the quarterback mark. No winning quarterback has ever rushed for more than 100 yards in a victory over Nick Saban. It's been two things, efficient passing and the only guy to throw two interceptions, LSU in that 9-6 game. That was Jarrett Lee for LSU. That 9-6 game was uh, one versus a two. Here's Knight, goes deep. Another batted ball. Yeah. It was Duran, uh, nose tackle, wasn't that? Time? Yes, it was, Duran Payne. Payne. Yep. He's usually a first to second down guy. What came at 345 pounds has gotten down to 310. Much better football player. Third and 10. Josh Reynolds near side. Three wides to the top of the screen. Knight gets rid of it. Dropped. It was a tough catch. Fast intended for Keith Ford. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, again, the pass rush, Tim Williams, Jonathan Allen, too much on these sure passing situations. If the first look isn't there for Trevor Knight, he's smart to just scramble forward and get rid of the ball, avoid the bad play, which he did. Eddie Jackson, two punt returns for touchdowns this year. Fair catch called by Jackson, and he'll let it bounce. Takes a bit of an Alabama rule. Good one going here in Tuscaloosa. 2014. 2014 Alabama in the quest for a national championship. So are the Aggies. You've come up with something new. Well, I've been reading. Dennis Dodd wrote an article, real good article. He believes 12 teams are still alive right. for the playoff. I think it's 15. I'm also including his 12, the, the regulars, Alabama, Te Texas A&M, Florida, Ohio State, Michigan. But I think Wisconsin, LSU, and Tennessee are still alive. I think a two-loss champion, if things kind of break, we've seen it before with LSU going with two mm -hmm. losses from the Big Ten or the SEC could still be alive. So I got 15 teams still alive. I've got a statement. I, may I buy a vowel? Yes, back? go for it. Vanna White, you turn around and grab one. Nancy will give you a vowel. <laughs> There's the QB comparison. <laughs> See Lundquist behind us? Yes. Beautiful. Hurts. Not this time. Wow. Is that a shocking call? To me, it's a shocking call. They just finished a 14-play drive. And what do they do? Drop back in the pocket on first down. And that was Jarrett Johnson who got there first. So you can see. Mac, Dalen Mack, number five. Again, substituted. Allow AM. AM says, no, thank you. We don't need guys. <laughs> Substitute. We lost all our DBs. Oh my gosh. Lateral for No, pass. it's called an incomplete pass. Okay. But close. Flag down. Offside, number 10 defense, in the neutral zone at the snap, five-year penalty, second down. Deshaun Hall, number 10. Crowding the line of scrimmage, had his hands behind the ball, but he just lurched forward before the snap. Yep. Great job, Jonah Williams is doing number 73, the true freshman right tackle. Came here in the spring, had a whole mouthful of the two defensive ends that play for Alabama to get ready, Tim Williams and Ryan Anderson. And he's had a superb year at that right tackle spot. Joshua Jacobs. Great job by Miles Jarrett. Jarrett, excuse me. Claude George with the tackle. Let's check in with Allie. 
Vernon Gary Caesar was taken back to the x-ray room. He got x-rays because he kept pointing to the back of his neck and was feeling a lot of pain in that area. He was also struggling to lift his right arm, but now he's back on the field without a shirt or a jersey on, and they're doing some massage work on the sideline. You will not see him anytime soon. Okay, Ali, thank you. Bo Scarborough, who had that 85-yard run for a touchdown in Knoxville last week, is the running back now on third down and three. And he had some pressure. It'll be fourth down. Great play by Deshaun Hall, number 10, right here. He jumped up. He had to make the play. Watch him. He will not get hooked on the play. He fights off O.J. Howard. He fights off our Darius Stewart. He fights off everybody to turn it back to where the help is. Perfect job of defense. Only the second punt now for J.K. Scott, the junior out of Denver. His first went 60 yards. Christian Kirk is back. That was my least favorite sequence of plays for Alabama. I thought they had him tired and they came out and just tried to throw it. Kirk waves it off and bounces out of bounds near the 34 yard line. Now, Quicken Loans presents today's scholar athletes for Texas A&M, Riley Garner with an outstanding GPA. And for Alabama, Sean Dion Hamilton, number 20. Quicken Loans' commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Texas A&M and Alabama's general scholarship fund. You know, interesting, Vern, uh, Alabama has only lost 12 times since 2008 under Nick Saban. There are some common threads. One of them, eight of the teams had the week off prior to the game. And they didn't have the week off. Knight, deep right side. Frank is down on the near side. Offside. 49 defense in the neutral zone is a snap. Five year penalty. First down. And the same thing for Trevor Knight. He knew he had a free play. He saw the flag. And he just threw it downfield and figured can't hurt anything. Right there at the end of the line of scrimmage, trying to cheat the blitz into the neutral zone. Now it was Minka Fitz Fitzpatrick, number 29. Knight fumbles it. He's being chased. Gets rid of it, throws it directly into the AM bench. Deshaun Hand was chasing him. Well, you know, there has been one interception in the game by Trevor Knight, but for the most part, he hasn't had the bad plays and just enough good plays. You know, that one run before the end of the half and a couple deep balls. That one was perfect. Had the big run uh, about which Gary was just speaking that was on fourth and two a 27 yard run right now it's second down and five the Aggies trailing by six and it all broken tackle and Keith Ford powers his way those high snaps are becoming a regularity. Well, when I put acrobatic, I meant as a thrower, not as a catcher. And he has made a lot of good catches of the Snedder snap in this game. Remember, Eric McCoy is just a freshman as well. He redshirted a year ago, but he is, uh, they got a true freshman at left guard and a freshman at center. Little trouble with the chain. Third down and two. And like it snapped, it almost snapped in half. I think it was Reuben Foster that was at the end of the play. Yes, he kicks it and it kind of snaps in half. Much as. Yeah, I thought that's. You need a new chain. I'm sure Alabama will have plenty of extra equipment. <laughs> you know it's a long game when you're Shane Stacks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> They're wrapping the chain. Wow. <laughs> Next week.
week, Florida, Georgia, 3.30 from Jacksonville. Vern, what's that game called? Well, it used to be called the largest cocktail party, <laughs> outdoor cocktail party in the world. So you're the only one. You're the la you're last year. What can they do to you? Right? Are they going to fire me? <laughs> Special time next week. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Allie, could you get an injury report on that uh, chain down there, please? Definitely not coming back. No. Now that's the, oh, look at this. Yep. We go from a walk to a trot. Chris Conley, the side judge, said you're too slow. Well, it's third and two. If you're Noel Mazzoni, do you think you can run for two yards? The last time on fourth and two, it was the quarterback. been replaced third down two 206 to go third quarter and the Crimson Tide in quest of their 20th win in a row last loss was here against Ole Miss 2015 and they're holding on to a six-point edge for a first down to the 46. Jonathan Allen missed on the tackle. Well, we've been seeing Trivian Williams number five as the ball carrier, but in this game, they decided they needed more size, and Keith Ford has been the leading rusher in the game for them with attempts. He's got 11 rush attempts. And 67 yards is a quick trip. Oh, that blew up. That was Kristen Kirk saying hello to Marlon Humphrey, number 26. Nobody does it better than Alabama on these short plays. They aggressively try to take the short passing game away so they get their offensive line, excuse me, their defensive line time to get there. Knight fake chased. Got him! Tim Williams! Five and a half sacks for the year for the pass rush specialist. Well, what happened? Alabama stopped the short play, so what does a &M try to do? They try to fake it and go long. Alabama says no way. So what happens? Nobody to throw to? You're going to get a sack. You don't have time now. Should have been thrown away. Give me a big play. Don't give me a bad play. What do you got? Third and 26. Four wides, three to the right side. Four down linemen for Alabama. Knight goes backward, chased. Jonathan Allen! Touchdown! He had a 75-yard fumble return earlier. It is another Knotts. And Allen with his second touchdown of the season. Incredible! I think it was Ryan Anderson that caused the play. You know what else, Burn? It was another high snap sooner or later. But watch Ryan Anderson blow it up. And there's the turnover belt. Jonathan Allen's second touchdown of the season. It is a high snap. Coming off the left side, it's Ryan Anderson that blows it up, scooped up. Coming up, watch Ryan Anderson, hits it. Ford drops it, and scoop and score. Incredible string of non-offensive touchdowns. They go for two. Ridley. Hurts. Goes deep. Knocked away. A 30-yard fumble return. 
Vern, it was a nightmare from the start. High snap and an edge rusher. High snap, edge rusher, blown up by Ryan Anderson. I think Ryan Anderson had the sack that Deron Payne scored the touchdown against Ole Miss in that game. That's another cause touchdown by Ryan Anderson. You know, looking at that snap again, it wasn't that bad. I cannot give that to Eric McCoy. It wasn't as bad as I first thought. That did not cause the bad play. That was just a great play by Alabama. And yet again, another non-offensive touchdown. That is the 10th straight game. Unbelievable. Isn't it, though? Now five fumble returns for touchdowns, four interception returns for touchdown. Seven different players on Alabama's defense have scored a touchdown. There's teams in college football that haven't had seven off different offensive players score touchdowns. Knots, the acronym for non- touchdowns two of them now belonging to the wonderfully gifted defensive end number 93 There's Justin Evans. and let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studio for this Ford update thank you Vern this is an offensive touchdown after they kicked off down the road at Auburn Eli Stove on the Tigers first play from scrimmage the freshman wide receiver 78 yards full speed and Auburn has a 7-0 lead on Arkansas. Back to you. That's a fascinating game with uh, serious implications for who winds up in Atlanta. First down 10, now 26-14. With 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ford. That's his 12th carry. We were talking with Jonathan Allen yesterday when he visited us, and I go, how come 2010 team had complacency, but this team doesn't seem to have it? And he goes, a lot of the players on this defense didn't play that much last year. We're wanting to show what we can do. We're hungry. That's the end of three with the score 26-14. We'll return to Tuscaloosa right after this message and a word from your local station. Denny Stadium, the top-ranked Alabama Crimson Tide against the sixth-ranked Aggies of Texas A&M, 26-14 with 15 minutes to go. Second down, seven. Trevor Knight. Takes the direct snap, four-man rush. Fumble! Loose! Knight chasing after it. It goes out of bounds. If there is a scouting report on Trevor Knight as he's loose in the pocket with the football. This time, it just slips out of his hand. I mean, it's happened to everybody who's played quarterback, but he smartly bats it out of bounds to save the play because it could have been disaster again. Yeah, it really was alert. It's a loss of seven. It's third and 19. On third and 26 at the end of the third quarter, fumble returned by Jonathan Allen for Alabama. They'll go left and punt. Deron Payne with the tackle. And that brings on Shane Trapuca. Eddie Jackson back to return it. Alabama may have a couple small weaknesses. Small weaknesses, maybe Jalen Hurts in the pocket, but their strength covered up everything in the way they turn the ball over. Jackson with room. 
Oh my goodness, what a special teams tackle. That was Sean Washington flying to catch up. For just a second, you thought, can he do it again? Sean Washington said, no, not this time. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Battle of unbeatens, and this game was dominated by Alabama early, but they had to settle for field goals the first three trips inside the red zone, and then O.J. Howard caught that pass. But the Aggies retaliated with 14 consecutive points. This one, Trevor Knight to Christian Kirk. 14-13 at that spot, and then this wonderfully timed pass to Calvin Ridley, 14-play scoring drive. And just most recently, Jonathan Allen rolled in with a fumble return. The 10th straight non-offensive touchdown. And you saw the graphic, perhaps. That is the most in 20 years. How do you count for it? Or can you? Um, well, they're well coached. They, okay. they now are in a feeding frenzy. They want to score touchdowns. Their, their desire is, and as we've said many times, they have good football players. And when they get their feeling, especially when you get vulnerable in a long yard of situations, they start to make plays. They look forward to that part of the football game. You know, I think without that one play by Alabama to score the defensive uh, return of the fumble, I think a and saying, okay, Fourth sure. quarter, got it into the fourth quarter of, the, of this game, but now they got to be careful to not let this thing get away real quick. Tremendous field position, and uh, Lane Kiffin could call any play right now. O.J. Howard starts in motion to the right. Here's Hertz. And the play call is the quarterback's keeper up the middle. Let's take a look at the end of that punt return. Eddie Jackson. Yeah, it was the old necktie tackle. Remember those? Oh, gosh. I don't know if he, you know, I have no idea what it is. It is hip or leg that bothered him on the play. Something, obviously, when you're on the golf cart, it's not good. Up the middle. Allie, what you got? Vern, they're actually taking Eddie Jackson back to the locker room as we speak. He is not able to put any pressure on that left leg. That's all I know for now. I'll keep you posted. Now that is an All-American being carted off. Wow. Right, and that is one of the potential weaknesses for this Alabama team. They do not have the depth and numbers in the secondary that they've had in past years. Injuries would really step this team down. First down, 10. Play. Now he comes to the left and looks for blocking help, and he is in for the touchdown. Well, Jalen Hurts, this was not a called play. This was a pass. It's not there. He sees the opening, what's just fake? One fake, and then right at the end of the play, Kelvin Ridley gets the last block. Watch him. Goes low, gets the last cleanup block to put Jalen Hurts into the end zone. Well, that was good for 37 yards. Jalen Hurts, this one, had a 45-yarder against Tennessee. The crowd was chanting, chanting, Eddie, Eddie, as he was going off on the cart. Ah. Uh, now that is a sad thing to see. I think it was Armani Watts that got injured on that play. He was the one that Ridley blocked on the play. Let's take a look at Jalen Hurts touchdown run. From behind this time, Jalen makes one guy miss with just his great ability. Now his speed and size, and he sets up our Darius Stewart, number 13, and Ridley blocked right to the, was it the right or the left knee right there? Obviously, let's watch him throw, bottom of the screen right here. Looks like it was his left knee that he got him with. Hurts 
17 carries for 91 yards and that touchdown time call. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Dodge. Direct TV. Advocare. And by Chick-fil-A. Well, those Denny Chimes are a part of this beautiful campus. They are just across the street from Bryant Denny and uh, the entrance to the quad. Just how fast things can change, boy. Our aerial coverage today provided by Goodyear for 60 years. Goodyear has provided aerial coverage of college football's greatest traditions and biggest rivalries. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, but it was a good how, interruption. How was, fast can things change? <laughs> With a minute to go, A&M had the ball on the 50-yard line, first and 10, down 20 to 14. Three minutes later, two touchdowns. Yes. Well, you had the fumble return. And here's the extra point. But I think that blimp thing was more important in the long term. In the long term, <laughs> yes. Exactly. It certainly was. <laughs> well, a little celebration. Jalen Hurts, freshman from Channel View, Texas. We invite you to stay tuned for the Jeep postgame show. That's coming up after our game. Griffiths with the kickoff. Christian Kirk will bring it out. Had a chance for a big return. Out of bounds at the 35. And Trevor Knight coming out wearing number eight for Texas A&M. Yeah, interesting story evolved this week for Alabama. I'm going to show you Blake Sims against Texas A&M. Now, why would we show you, by the way, Miles Garrett in this game, why would we show you Blake Sims in a highlight against Texas A&M? There's a reason. Because I'm out at practice Thursday, and who is the scout quarterback wearing number eight? Blake Sims. All week, he was the guy that gave the picture being Trevor Knight. And his presence here is the pass. 50 yard nice line. Throw. Josh Reynolds. And they'll hurry up now. That participation by the graduate is allowed, approved by the NCAA. Occasionally, yep. graduate students can come and yes. participate. We asked Nick about it, and I go, How did you know that rule? And he said, We got a guy, a guy that knows all the rules. He said, I've got 6,000 assistants. That's right. Every one of them has we got it. a guy. They're in charge of something. Alabama is not going to announce that Trent Richardson's going to be Leonard Fournette next week. He's going to come back and wear number seven. Ah. Knight will run. Looks like Blake Sims to me. Well, and he's down to the 35. Well, Trevor Knight is one of the fastest players that plays for Texas A&M. And one of the things you have to do if you're Alabama is keep him out of the field for broken field play when he's best. And that's illegal procedure for A&M. They're going to move it back five yards. I don't think Josh Reynolds was set. False start on the offense. All 11 players were not set at the same time. Five-yard penalty, first down. Interestingly, though, as you look back, is it was Blake Sims who was Trevor Knight, and he was the scout team quarterback in the bowl game when Oklahoma played. So he's done it twice. He's 0-1 so far. <laughs> After the penalty, first down 15 and the ball at the 40. 33-14. Seems like the snap of a finger when it was 20 to 14. Wow. Keith Ford. Yep. They met number 10 and 56. Riven Foster, Tim Williams. <laughs> A tough matchup again right over there Jonathan Allen right over the freshman football player let's see what he does nice job yes it was, oh, he was dropped. Dropped. 
You know, it's funny. Vern, I was talking to Noel Mazzoni before the game, and I said, what will you take? The big plays or the regular plays? Just the ones you know that you can make every day. And he goes, we're going to need them both. Uh. <laughs> That's true. When you beat a good defense, you got to have some big plays, but you can't cough up the easy ones. An unforced error right there. 33 14 10 32 to go in the ball game. Knight forced to his left. Fires in, he's got a man open, and the ball is Josh Reynolds. It was stripped, yes, by Tony Brown, number two. That was a good job that time by Trevor Knight. He felt the rush that could have been and should have been caught. It was not a great pass, but when you're running away from that pass rush to your left and you deliver the ball there, that has to be caught. Back-to-back -back drop passes. Fourth and 15. Why not? You're down by 19. Alabama has four down. Play action. Chased by Jonathan Allen. And it's incomplete. The ball goes over to the Crimson Tide. Jonathan Allen just shook hands with Ryan Anderson. And there's a reason. Because as you said, Jonathan Allen just abused the young freshman on that play. And then the two of them will turn around and go, this is good work. And they shake each other's hands. And uh, they teamed up for a touchdown before and a fourth down play there. 19-point margin. Adam Zucker, New York. Auburn is running away from Arkansas early. Stanton Truett, the third different Tigers player to rush for a touchdown in the first quarter. They racked up 183 on the ground. 21-0 as they're underway now in the second quarter. Tigers trying to win their fourth straight as we go back to Tuscaloosa. Now, what had been a warm seat down at Auburn is getting cooler, isn't it? For Gus Malzahn, 33-14, Alabama. And they got those 14 points on either side of the third quarter break. Fumble return for a touchdown, and then Jalen Hurts, who now has 17 carries for 91 yards to complement the 15 of 25 throwing for 166. Joshua Jacobs is the running back, and he gets... Uh, well, Jalen Hurts, we've mentioned he went to Channel View High School where he played for his father. Uh, he was recruited heavily by the Aggies, by Kevin Sumlin. But they had two quarterbacks, five-star quarterbacks, Kyle Allen and Kyler Murray, who were on the squad. So Hertz agreed to come to Alabama. Well, then when the two five-star recruits disappeared, one went to Houston, one went to Oklahoma. TCU, I beg your pardon. Uh, they went back and recruited Jalen Hurts again. Kevin Sumlin asked for and was granted a chance to do a home visit. And Jalen Hurts, who's got the ball in his hands right now, said he was going to stay with his original commitment. That is admirable. All right. And uh, Kevin told us yesterday he's known this young man since he was 10 years old. St. Mary Height dad, as you said, high school football coach, and he's known Kevin, and Kevin knew the, uh, uh, his dad. Yep. I asked Lane, how'd you get this guy? I mean, he, you know, uh, you're a pocket-passing team, and you usually don't have this style of quarterback. How did you make it fit? And he goes, we told him he was teach him how to be a pocket passer. He wanted to be a pro quarterback that we wouldn't run him. Oh, gosh, no, they won't run him, will they? How about this, Damian Harris? Now, just to complete the uh, Jalen Hurts story, uh, his paternal grandparents are in the stands, James and Cynthia Duger. There they are. Uh, their son decided, uh, we think he decided not to come at the last minute. His high school team lost a uh, tough game. Like, well, it wasn't tough. It was just terrible. 68 to nothing. But grandma and grandpa are here. Yep. It's tough, though. 68 nothing. Yeah. Tough to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you want to go see a football game after that. Oh, boy. Nice play. That man. 
man's name is Miles Garrett. Yep. He's a pretty good football player. This time it's one of those rushes where he just attacks the mesh point. He's only got one job, and he does it well. Had a sweet block from the opposite side, and he ran right back past it. Third and three, 7.48 to go. Shows three seconds, two, one, got it. Hurts got a first down. Wow, uh, that's the old Cam Newton play right there. Fake to the running back and follow him. That's that's right out of the Auburn playbook right here. You attack and then you follow. Boom, boom, right inside. Beautiful play, and you have to be a big, strong quarterback to run that play, and he is. 102 yards, so the Crimson Tide now with two men over 100 yards on the ground. Damian Harris, 16 for 122. We're under seven to play. Damian Harris. Sean Washington. As Alabama continues to try to put this game away on the ground here, they've now rushed the ball for almost 270 yards. One of the key moves that was made by the staff, Lane Kiffin and Nick Saban, was moving Ross Pierbacher back to left guard. He started the year at right guard. They did not like the fit. They moved him over to left guard, and everything seemed to click after that. Alphonse Taylor, the right guard, is not playing today because of the continuing symptoms or uh, aftermath of a concussion. They fake the toss. It goes Bo Scarborough. Six minutes to go. By the way, AM is back home against New Mexico State. They were open last week. Then they conclude the schedule. At Mississippi State, Ole Miss at home, UT San Antonio, and LSU. Time called with 5.54 to go. Called by the Aggies. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, where Alabama leads 33-14. All year long, we've been celebrating our very own Vern Lundquist in his last year in the SEC. And our friends at ESPN joined in the fun when he was a guest picker on College Game Day. What a treat to have our good friend Vern Lundquist as our celebrity guest picker. So thrilled to have you here. Thank you, Reese. There's a running back for UCLA named Bolo Oleman Funry. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. I practiced it. <laughs> and UCLA beats the Utes. Not so fast. I knew it. Vern, I saw that Wisconsin won, so that's one win in your column of picks today. We're going to have to find out later how well you did overall. You guys keep sneaking this stuff around. That was great of our friends at ESPN. Yes, it was. You. Yes. That was just great. Well, Reese and uh, Coach Corso, uh, Desmond, uh, David Pollock, Samantha. You held oh. your own, though. I think you held uh, your you, own. Uh, you know? did I, really? I thought you were good. Well, I don't know how my picks came out. Well, you got Wisconsin, as yeah. I just said. Oleron Fumbi. You still got it? Yeah. You got it. What are they going to do, fire me? <laughs> <laughs> There's Hurts. That really was fun. By the way, with just under six minutes to go, this Nick Saban program that he's built here with a win here. It will be the sixth time in nine years that Bama will go into November undefeated. Sixth time in nine years. Just to look at it, three times they lost in November. 2011, 12, and 13. They lost the SEC championship in 2008. They were undefeated in 2009. What will happen? in 2016. I like their chances. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the time they lost in 2011, they still won it all. Yes, that's right. Time has been called. And 2012, by the way. Tonight on 
CBS will begin with the new hit series MacGyver, followed by TV's number one drama NCIS, and a new edition of 48 Hours, that's tonight, only CBS. to 20 he'll yeah, have yeah. a 19 streak and a 20 streak you want to know one reason why it kind of feeds on itself we got that fourth down play let's take this fourth down play before we get too far off the game fourth and three there's miles garrett bo scarborough is the running back safely behind Jalen hurts play action hurts nobody to throw to it's no. a long play all no. the way AM did not go for that at all. Fake it, and over here, everybody plays honest. Sean Washington, Hall, everybody's honest. Nowhere to go. Nobody out for a pass. It was run all the way. I was saying it builds on each other. In the last six drafts, Alabama has had 44 players taken, 15 first rounders, 10 second rounders, and probably four or five more to come this year. Kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Boy, oh boy. Who's Knight out of bounds? And I really thought if AM, the score of this game might matter for AM if they could get it a little closer. I kind of thought if they could get a close loss, they would still be in the argument for being in the playoffs. You never know what happens at the end of these seasons. People start losing games. They start looking for second teams in conferences. That was incomplete. Let's take a look at the top 10. Alabama, Ohio State plays at Penn State tonight. Michigan, big win over Illinois, 41-8. Washington plays tonight. The Aggies on the verge here. Louisville, big win over NC State. Nebraska trying to maintain an undefeated streak. Christian Kirk. Well, every week that we have been in Alabama, we've enjoyed Vonda Collins, getting to know her 10 years on the force of the Tuscaloosa Police Department. She's retiring, getting married, and moving to Anderson, South Carolina. She's been such a pleasure to be around. And yep. We want to wish her all the best. She's our escort to the game. She picks us up, takes yep. care of us, helps out on the field. And uh, for the game, I drove in with her, had a great time. And uh, she told me she's going to get married and she's ready to start a family. Oh, great. Thanks. Thirty-three, fourteen. Just saying for AM, keep it close. I mean, they're competing with the Ohio State Michigan loser and Louisville for a late ad, maybe if things get really wacky. Knight had to throw that one, and it was caught by an Alabama player sitting on the bench. Well, he didn't there score with it. No. <laughs> That's Ross Pierce Baker. Nice. Right. Didn't have to move. This was a. Pierce Baker's going, can I get a knot? <laughs> well, at least I get a hand. Yes. <laughs> hand off left side. Travion Williams. Well, we mentioned the Aggies' remaining schedule. See, they were open prior to this week, and those games, New Mexico State, Mississippi State, I think Ole Miss is a threat. Yep. LSU, but they've got a nice, it's not a bad schedule no, from here on out. They did throw the flag. Now against Avery Genesee says it's going to be on Alabama that he moved because the Alabama player was in the neutral zone. Rashawn Evans. 
Correction. Offside. Number 32 is the defense. His movement into the neutral zone causes opponent to move early. Got it right. Five yard penalty. Third down. By the way, Rashawn Evans is a guy who I thought was going to be an emerging star this year. Can't really find his way on the football field to get a lot of snaps, but watch him 2000 and next year, 2017. He's going to be another one of those game breakers that uh, people here in Alabama know about him, but everybody else will find out more about him. 33 14, third and one. Into the secondary, first down. Travion Williams moves the ball to the 30. There, I really think a, a score by AM will help their cause here. There's Miles Garrett. Fascinating young man. Interested in so much other than this sport. Yes. First down at the 30. Almost intercepted, is it? Ronnie Harrison dived for it. It's ruled incomplete. I'll tell you, Hootie Jones did a great job. In the olden days, before targeting, he would have destroyed this player. Instead, he went for the body with his shoulder. He didn't go down. He didn't lower the crown. And that's the effect of the targeting call. That player could have been severely hurt. And now it's just an incomplete pass. And what the people with the targeting rules are trying to make our sports safer. Jonathan Allen nicked on the play. I don't think it's much more than that. And he is walking off. That might be the end of his afternoon. You know, when we first started doing this, Vern, you know, five years ago, that play was a receiver, you know, going yep. for a play, and a DB would just go helmet first into his side and take him out. That no longer, it still happens. But we have more plays like that now. Second and ten. Ball carried down to the 25. Bussey is the ball carrier. Kendall Bussey, number 25. And it's third and five. 245 to go. It's just so hard to retreat when you're a quarterback because the rush comes up the middle. Alabama's playing nice soft zone coverage, but when you retreat because of good coverage downfield, those outside defensive ends are going to pin you. You have to climb the pocket. You got just speed coming off the edges. You can't outrun them. Fourth down and 18. Second sack of the game for Tim Williams. Knight, ball goes over. Deshaun Hand got this one. Well, they consider Deshaun Hand a starter. He doesn't get as many reps, but again, it's Ryan Anderson now giving Tim Williams a blow, and you bring in another guy that goes around the edge and forces the sack to one of his partners. Right now, Kevin Sumlin's looking at his football team and saying, okay, we lost the game. We cannot lose a season. There's a lot to play for. We can win the rest of our football games, and who knows what can happen for AM. Who knows? Not likely, but who knows? Saw the graphic five sacks today. That's 1.2 of the average. Bo Scarborough. First 
smash them up front. You know, we showed the top 10 there, and what's really interesting, Vern, is the Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama right at the top right there, okay? In the last draft, Ohio State had 12 players taken, Clemson 9, and Alabama 7. Uh, can you say reload? <laughs> they do it about as well as anybody in college football. I'm just looking around here. It's a 19-point game. Yeah, everybody's here. Everybody is still here. There's some in the upper reaches, but boy, they do love their football. Well, they haven't had a lot of home games this year. That's right. You know, yeah. I mean, they, they want to enjoy their product. Look at this. We haven't gotten the final crowd count, but it was excess, uh, in excess of 100,000. 33-14 the score. Aggies call another timeout. Pretty good defensive effort yet again by Alabama. Yeah, and, it, and it, like you say, this is an explosive offense they're playing. That's how good this Alabama defense is. Less than a minute to go. Bo Scarborough again. This time the tackle is Miles Garrett. Just to give you an example, in this game, AM rushing yardage and passing yardage. Prior to this game, they had run and pass for 200 yards in every game. Not today. 33-14, Nick Saban still coaching or advising. And they are about to win their 20th consecutive ball game. Third down eight. Let's also remember about how Kevin Sumlin has rebuilt this program. He went and hired John Chavis, now Noel Mazzoni to be more balanced. Remember this team lost 59 to nothing to this Alabama team. He made the changes, and they're a much better balanced team in a position to compete for championships now than they were then. Three seconds to go. Open week for Alabama next week, and then they go to LSU. Mississippi State, Chattanooga, and the Iron Bowl, which will be here this year. Here's Garber. And an improving Albert team that's got a chance to come in here with a hot winning streak. And Alabama gets a bye, and LSU. Jalen Hurts, 93 yards on the ground, 166 throwing. Kevin Sumlin, Nick Saban. Three fourteen, the final, the key play. I don't think there's much doubt. Now turn the whole game around, right? Fumble recovery. Late third quarter. There's the force as Jonathan Allen picks it up and rumbles in for the score. Let's listen to Alabama's Eli Gold with the call. Quarterback, here's the ball, it's loose. Picked up by Alabama. It's Jonathan Allen. He's going to take it for his second touchdown of the year. Touchdown, Alabama. Ball was knocked loose by Ryan Anderson. Picked up by Jonathan Allen. They've done it again. A quick look at our old friend. There's Nick Saban. And there is Eli Gold, the suddenly spelt Eli Gold. <laughs> no, what, 30 He's pounds. lost 32 pounds. <laughs> He's a dear, dear friend. Let's go down to Allie, who's with Nick Saban. Coach, congrats on the win. This was just a six-point game at the half. What set this team apart in the second half? Well, I, I really like the way our players responded in the second half when we got behind 14-13, and AM went right down and scored on their first possession of the second half. So great competitive spirit on our part to come back and dominate the game the rest of the way. Once again, 
again you head into November undefeated what has impressed you most about this football team well we've gotten better every week there's certainly things we need to continue to improve on but I'm really proud of this bunch this has been a tough stretch for us they persevered very well we got a week off now we got to regroup and try to improve for another tough game coming up against LSU a lot of people are concerned about Eddie Jackson we heard the fans chanting Eddie as he was carted off the field what do you know I can't tell you I don't really know they took him in an x-ray to my and got the results of it. Coach, enjoy the week off and congratulations. Right. Thank you. Jonathan, we'll bring you over here now, the defensive star. Congratulations on your second defensive touchdown of the year. How did it compare to the first? Oh, it felt good. Whenever you can put points on the board as a defense, it's always a positive. Texas A&M led the conference in total offense coming into this game. What did the mentality of the defense have to be? As a defense, you want to shut down every opponent you play. We could be playing the New England Patriots. Our mentality is going there and dominate. And I feel we did a good job of doing that today. Do you want me to call Tom Brady and tell him he's coming? <laughs> no, nah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> there are seven members of this defense who have scored touchdowns this season. Do you have something going with the offense here where you're going one for one with them? You know, we're just going out there and trying to make plays. And when, when opportunity strikes, we got to take advantage of them. So I think we did a good job doing that today. Congrats on the win. Enjoy Thank the week you. off. Thank you. You know what I like best? When he asked him about Brady, he said, not yet. <laughs> Well, we mentioned earlier, he's majoring in financial planning. That's a degree that will come in handy. Moments ago, Kevin Sumlin on the right, Jalen Hurts on the left. They've known each other for almost a decade. Well, compelling football for three quarters, and then the Crimson Tide broke it open. For Gary Danielson and Allie LaForce, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Tuscaloosa. The final score, 33-14. The Chief Post Game Show up next. And that's coming up right after these messages.